Good morning, everyone. The psychologist uh, Walter Mischel was a professor at Stanford University in the late 1960s and early 1970s. And he did a series of studies on delayed gratification. Mischel gathered a group of four to six year old children and gave each child a marshmallow. He told them that he was going to leave the room for 15 minutes and if the marshmallow was still there when he returns, he would give them a second marshmallow, at which time they could enjoy two marshmallows instead of one. When he did further studies on these same children 10 and 20 years later, he found that those who were able to delay gratification and not eat that first marshmallow, then when they grew up, they had much higher SAT scores, were much healthier, and were much, much more successful both socially and economically. This delayed gratification test shows that successful people, whether you're spiritually successful, physically successful, financially successful, whatever way you define that word, Successful people keep a better balance between experiencing a particular joy today, right now, and waiting for a greater reward tomorrow. This connection between what we need to do today and what this hard work will result in tomorrow is a balance that we all struggle with every day, whether we are aware of it or not. More important than just today and tomorrow is how clearly we see the connection between the past, the present, and the future. If we omit the past, very often people develop some sort of victim mentality. This is just what cards I was dealt with and this is just the situation I was born in. Sometimes we think too much of the past. Sometimes we are too immersed in the present as if there were no past. And sometimes we only dream about the future and forget that a solid past and present leads to a better future. In today's gospel, Jesus speaks to, about, to us about a man who did not see the connection between the past, the present, and the future. He lived in the present as if there were no past. That particular year, his crop was abundant and he was not able to see beyond the abundance of that crop. But like every farmer knows, an abundant crop is the exception rather than the rule. We too have some good years and some bad years in our life. In today's gospel, the man said to himself, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Take ease, eat, drink, and be merry. He quickly forgot that the past, which may have yielded nothing, and he overlooked that the future, which could also bring nothing, are also possibilities. Furthermore, the abundance that he experienced today should not have been an excuse for either laziness or wastefulness. Therefore, the first lesson we can draw from this gospel is that we should not forget that there is a past, a present, and a future. And all three are very closely and intricately connected to each other. The second lesson is that there is a past and a present, but there may not be a future, or our future may not be very long. This is not to be negative or pessimistic, but we really don't know how long our future is. And so we can't live as if there is neither a past nor a future. The first lesson reminds us that before we go to the abundance of the present, there were many years of struggles in the past. The future could bring either more abundance or more hardships. A lot of unknowns there. The second les lesson is a variant on this. It reminds us that the present may be wonderful, 
But that does not mean that we will be here tomorrow to enjoy the beautiful things we have around us today. There may have been a past, there may be a present, but we never know how many days in the future we have. In both these lessons we learn something very valuable. First, we need to appreciate, enjoy, and not waste what God gives us today. Look around you. Immerse yourself in the beautiful things that you have around you today. Second, we need to realize that although we have abundance today, none of it may be here tomorrow. And that's okay. There is one statistic that none of us can escape. And that is that 100% of the people who live end up dying. Unfortunately, we sometimes live without counting the blessings of today. And when we do this, we live, we live, unfortunately, as if we are not really living. Second, we sometimes live as if we will be here forever. If we walk through a cemetery, we will read many names. Tragically, some of those names thought that the world could not go on without them. And it did. Even worse, some work very hard, day and night, ruining their health, relationships, and sometimes in unethical ways. They worked hard for the very useless first prize of being the richest person in the cemetery. Today's readings are very blunt in reminding us to live with a simultaneous consciousness of the past, the present, and the future. It is very important to work hard. It is very important to have big dreams. But we are not able to enjoy the big things that we want to do in the distant future if we are not able to enjoy the little things that God gives us today, even the very little things. For example, look at these beautiful flowers. And we are blessed to live in an area where there are always blossoming roses and some kind of flower is blossoming every single day of the year. Even the succulents, you may have noticed. I didn't know this before. <laughs> they produce great flowers. <laughs> Those that are considered desert, arid plants. Everything produces flowers. There's just, and even the ones that don't, they have colors that are so vivid and beautiful. Last week, as I often do, and sometimes people do this for me, I picked some beautiful roses from our garden and put them on my desk. I'm amazed with just how varied their shapes and colors are and how beautiful they smell. However, the rose I picked last week is dry and only has a few petals on it. I brought them in here to This is my last week rose. Kind of shriveled, petals fell off. And here's another one. That's an image of the past. Whereas our roses I picked this morning are still fully covered and have not yet revealed their beautiful color or smell. This is a perfect example. That was the past. This is the present. And these two are the future. We're surrounded with images like this every day of our life. And we only need to look. If you notice the two buds on the side are fully covered and have not yet fully revealed either their color or their smell or their shape. This can remind all of us that the past is gone. It's nice to have had nice roses. The petals are dried, the past is gone. The present surrounds us and the future will surprise us. However, if we do not keep that close connection between a gratitude for the past, the absolute marvel and amazingness of the present, and the exciting possibilities of the future either here on earth or in the world to come 
we will never be able to appreciate the connection between all three and how everything around us is an amazing blessing from God. We too often focus on we, what we do not have. Today, practice noticing and embracing the blessings you have. Hug your husband, wife, mother, father, children, relatives. Hug them because of or despite what they may have said or done to you in the past. Hug them because you love them and also hug them because of difficulties in your life. Hug them of or despite the love or the disappointment that you may be feeling in the present. Hug them because of or despite your commitment to love them more in the future. Don't limit yourself to today's emotions, which may be very exciting or may not be very exciting and may carry with them a lot of wounds. Also take a look at something in your life, like the flowers, like your home, like your clothes, like every little detail, and spend a few minutes in absolute wonder and gratitude to God for how they got there and for where you are going. The marshmallow experiment may have been done on young children, but all of us sometimes have a very weak appreciation of the connection between the past, the present, and the future. What we have done in the past has led us to the present, and what we do in the present will lead us to the future. We all have a problem with delayed gratification. When we get in the rut of the problems of today and overlook the blessings of the past and the blessings of the future. The marshmallow, therefore, can be an analogy for life. If we cannot wait 15 minutes for another marshmallow, we should not be surprised that we have lost both the appreciation of the one we have before us and we should not overlook the fact that we will also forget and overlook any future blessings. Neither the past, the present, nor the future mean anything if we do not appreciate them as opportunities to grow in our faith and in our relationships and to see them as opportunities for the more important point to grow in love and gratitude for God and others. We need to do this because there are blessings in our past, there are blessings in our present, and, the, and there are blessings in our future, and all three are very intimately connected to our daily journey and walk with the Lord.